doing really cool things and hopefully we are going to present something together at the end of the session that most of the people that are, are going to be connected to it today will be enjoyed. Um, to share a little bit more about me, uh, maybe I can share my screen and start presenting everything. I have a, a small presentation and also a, a slide about me. Let me just click here. Um, here we have it. Uh, please confirm me if you can mm -hmm. see the yeah, screen. Yeah, I can see your screen. Perfect, cool. Um, show, let me just expand all the view here. Uh. So yeah, as you mentioned uh, in the beginning, uh, today we're going to talk about cool stuff uh, more related to low power uh, or area connections. Uh, directly to to a piece of har hardware that is changing the way that we are creating IoT devices uh, right now. Uh, we are going to talk about the WISBLOT, but before I start, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Maria Hernandez, uh, but most of the people uh, knows me as Mac Hernandez. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am currently working as a developer relation lead at Bragg Wireless. Um, growing up our community worldwide and putting effort together to build cool projects with people like you. Uh, I am I am like I identify myself as a passionate maker uh, as like profession. I am electric an electronics engineer and also I am community builder uh, but by passion, I run an IoT community here in the city where where I live, which is Medellin, uh, which is the city where where I migrated to four years ago because I am from Venezuela. So that is just like a summary about me. I have been uh, too much involved with a platform IoT platform IoT. I used to work with Ubidots before joining Rack. And now I decided to be, make the big jump and start thinking more with hardware. Uh, and that is what I'm going to be presenting today to you. Um, so before I start talking about the technical things, I would like to talk about modularity. So basically, modularity is when a system can be decomposed into a number of components that maybe mix and match in a party of configurations where components are able to connect, interact, or exchange different kinds of resources in some way by adhering to a standard interface, let's say connector, for example. For example, what you can see here on the screen is basically a nice organizer for your books and your decorations in your living room. But let's say that you want to place a new coach a, in front of that wall that we can see here. Uh, maybe you don't have like the enough space to do, but if you have a modular organi organizer like this one that we can see here, you can just exchange the, the blocks that are on it to make enough, uh, enough space to place your couch on it. So basically, that is something uh, that, that we have to do right now also with the hardware things. Uh, this is a, a, an image that I really wanted to, to place here and share with all of you because it's a really nice anecdote that I have when I was in the university. Uh, when I was in the university and I had to present like some projects, uh, digital electronic projects, most of the time at the beginning when I started doing like my, my initial test, I always start like placing the cables in the protoboards like from one point to another point. And then I have like a jungle of wires going around from the protoboard to another protoboard. And then the teacher says, hey, you have to, to place all the cables uh, in top of the protoboard. You, don't ha you, you can have like a jungle of wire. So maybe uh, most of you feel like this girl in the bathroom <laughs> when you are like working in, in electronic projects. Some of you may love cables, but others may not love cables. Um, so, if we jump how to start an IoT project, uh, we have to, to cover like different stages to be able to, to deploy it and have something that is able to be in the field uh, for years, right? So to start, basically, we need to be like a proof of concept. And 
what is a, like a proof of concept? Basically, we have to to uh, we have to make a list of all the requirements that our solution needs, uh, and based on the, those requirements that our solution needs, we have we need to to select um, a development board, for example, based on the requirements that our solution needs. For example, let's say connectivity type numbers and inputs and outputs, uh, if you want a low power device, for example. Uh, and also uh, you need to choose those connect those sensors that you need to, sensors or actuators that you need to connect to your project uh, or, any, or any additional system on it. Um, so basically, this is something that can be like, can be presented as a proof of concept. This is just like an early stage where where you can call it like proof of concept stage, and this is something that you can show to a client or, or just show you to you to demonstrate that the idea that you are presenting is a valid idea. In this way, you are happy, your client is happy, and and based on this, you or your client can give you some suggestions before going to a prototype stage right so then we jump to that prototype stage and basically uh, here we use a uh, ready to like ready to to be like model uh, for example if we we take as an example the radio models these are like really hard to difficult uh, they are really hard to to design so it's it's better to leave this to to the experts maybe you can just select one available radio in, in a radio model in the market and just place it on, on the board that you are prototyping. Uh, this board, as you can see here, is a, is a, a custom PCB uh, based on, on the, those suggestions that you receive from the early proof of concept. And this is something that you can like scalable like in a more easy way. You can build more than 100 uh, units from it because imagine uh, building 100 devices based on the <laughs> picture that I previously presented. That doesn't make sense. Like you don't have like a lot of time to to do that, and also it's not viable for for anyone. So you can present this to a client, and and in this is this looks more like nice for it, and it's more presentable. And in and we can say that it is in, it is on its way to to be almost ready uh, to be like on the field, um, but when this device is already deployed in the field, it's time to go to that evaluation process and that evaluation time that we can say. After that evaluation time, um, we jump to the, that initial product, product uh, commercial product production. And this takes months and months of, of development. And after that is where you realize and you start fronting like all the issues that are presented in, in the development of any IoT solution. So this is what I want to present like mainly today is the differences between typical hardware and agile hardware. Basically it is that how are we currently managing the development processes and also the time to market because we are creating products, IoT products, right? So basically this is the typical hardware development uh, that most of the time uh, are yeah that they want that are presented today on the market. Basically, we have uh, the requirements is like a waterfall method where we have we, where we arise the requirements, then we design our board, then we implement and we do the verifications on the system, and then we maintain all that process. But if you jump. If you if you jump to the last stage of the device, you usually don't come back to to the initial stage, right? Because if you need to come back, that means that you need to redesign your device from the beginning, and that change everything that you have been done so far. So it's pretty hard to to change like a device or a technology in the device when this device is already deployed on the field. So if we compare this with an, an agile hardware development, it's like really dif different because most of the time, uh, the like those big issues uh, that are found on the on the 
on the developments are found in the latest stages of the development. For example, let's say that we are working in an, an agricultural application uh, and these, these applications are uh, working with Sigfox or Narrowband IoT as connectivity technology. And after the results getting from all the observations that you made, uh, during those past months, you find out that the best option for that for that solution was LoRa instead of Sigfox or Narrowband, for example. And this means that you have to change absolutely everything because it's going to be like the connectivity model that you place in your initial design. And you have to go back, uh, which is a big problem, and it adds a lot of cost in like in money and also on time for your team and for you as well. So that is why we have to change uh, the way that we are currently developing hardware to a more agile way. So we can we can be in the position of inter interchange models during the development, even if these devices is already deployed on the field, which is like something that I believe that is super important for, for, for the current IoT developments. Uh, we have currently, like right now, you can say, okay, there are many plug and play devices that are currently on the market uh, that we can use to, to build like proof of concept. For example, here we have some of them. First, uh, on, the, on the left upper side, you can see an Spark on Quick. Then we have a CD Studio growth system and also like Node Link uh, uh, that are from NCD control everything. And also like the, the initial ones, which is like the Arduino with a bunch of shield in top of it looking like a big sandwich. <laughs> so basically like all of these systems are like, yeah, plug and play and, and can be used to like proof of concept, but all of them are interconnected with cables and look and it, it is also like makes those early stage um early stage the proof of concept looks like a jungle of wire so that is something that we can avoid and also it's important that these devices can be used to to be used for proof of concept but if you are going to production and you're going to develop the deploy this in the field this is not a viable solution to be applied again um, so that is why Rack Wallace put the effort of his for of its engineering team in order to create not just a product, in order to create a project, an open source project that opened the doors to all of those IoT developers that are looking to create IoT devices in an easy, reliable, and scalable way just by clicking, coding, and connecting. Uh, that is what I'm going to be presenting today, which is the WISLOC. Uh, this is the newest standard of for modular IoT. And when I say modular, it's really modular, <laughs> as I say in the beginning. Basically, no matter the industry that you are working on it, WISLOC can be adapted seamlessly to it. Um, basically, the limitation on processing, connectivity, and sensors and also Twitter's management are entirely up to the developer that are using this kit to, to develop their own solutions. Basically, this Wislog kit that you can see in this picture, this is the, the our connected box, uh, which is an affordable kit that allows you to, to play with the different technologies, uh, communication technologies, protocol technologies, um, in order to get started with, with an IoT development for any solution. Uh, the Wislog use ready to use market models uh, and also uh, all the sensors, connectivity and the, like the core models use an standard socket that allows you to, to make like industrial devices as well. So you can use this, this kit in order to, to go to your early stage prototyping your proof of concept. And also you can keep using them to deploy your solutions on the field and go to production with the same technology. And also it is low cost and reliable uh, for the different industries. Here I have a video that I wanted to show you, which is like a video that presents like the, all the value uh, that the Wislock have. And also you can see how can you easily interconnect all the pieces 
on it. So I'm going to press press play. Not sure if you can. So as you can see in the video, it's like pretty simple. It's like playing with Lego. Uh, and basically these are like the, let me uh, click here because I'm not able to change. Yeah, okay. So basically, as you can see, are like different models that allows you to interconnect and exchange the system uh, either for your initial stages or when you already deploy your system uh, in the in the field, so basically, uh, what we what we make like like what Rack made uh, is a modular system that allows you to interconnect sensors, actuators, models, communication models, and different type of interfaces in just one base, uh, which is the Wizblock base that that is like a carrier board of the rest of the components that also serve you as a mounting base to place your devices in any case. And as you can see, they, it has like four holes on the corners that allows you to place it in, in the best way um, for any solution that you are applying to it. Also, we have like the Wizblock core, uh, which is right now uh, based on a, on a Nordic NRF52 for MCU. Uh, an MCU that I'm pretty sure that the audience that, that is watching this is, is, is like a really fan of it, uh, that allows you to, to interconnect also with BLE. And also we include like a sentence model in order to provide lower connectivity to, to this unit processing core. Uh, additionally, it's also like important to keep in mind that we are working to include new more core models. So if you prefer other core model, you will be in the position of choose which is your prefer your preferred one to, to develop it with. Now also we have like develop the with block sensors, which are uh, add-ons that allows you to sensing and measuring uh, data, different kind of data such as movement data, environmental data, GPS sensor, uh, sorry, GPS, GPS data. Uh, and so on. We we are currently working hard in in giving uh, more options to to our Wizlock catalog. However, it's important to highlight that this project, like the Wizlock project, is an open source project. So all the resources, either from software resources or hardware resources, are fully open to our community of Rockstar. So all of those passionate about hardware that love to design new things can refer to our 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 documentation, uh, downloads the templates, and will be in the position of create their own models if they are looking for something fully customized that is not provided in the Wizlock catalog. And additionally, we have the um, Wizlock input and output models that allows us to connect additional inputs and outputs as its names refers to it and also to expand our communication possibilities. For example, as I just mentioned, the Wizlock core provides the, the option to connect over LoRa and BLE, but then if you want to extend the, cap the capabilities of if to interconnect over narrowband IoT um, or Wi-Fi, you can also do that uh, just by placing uh, uh, the respective model on the input and output slot. And also to exchange with different interfaces, uh, communication interfaces. So basically, it is like a, a Lego design in a nutshell where you can just add and remove blocks to transform your creation without having to start from the beginning. Uh, as I just mentioned, it, this is an open source project with the community needs in mind. Basically, what, what Rat did was okay. 
they start talking with their community members and they start hitting them and listen to them and was like okay what what were what were which were those uh, problems that you were facing uh, when you start working with iot how much time did you did you spend to to be able to go into to the market um which was uh, those communication models that you commonly use which are like the, the most common sensors that are going to use and based on this they decide to create this this project uh, as mentioned this is like fully open source uh, is it is currently uh, supported uh, under arduino and platform io and also we are working on on the support of micro micro python for those uh, micro python lovers and also all the libraries that we currently use um, for, for all the examples that are provided in the Wislog repository are open source library for communication protocols, for data processing, for sensor inputs and outputs, uh, also like our Twitters and user interfaces. And for those libraries that are not like that, that, are, that doesn't exist, the Wislog repository provides a solution for it. So, like you don't have to to take the time to develop all these things by your own because we already are taking this uh, we already we already are taking care of this just if you build your own model maybe you have to take care of your of your own library right uh, but yeah I, there are many existing re uh, resources uh, right now that we can play around with um these are like more detail all the all the models that are currently <clears throat> provided in in our catalog basically here we have i lost my mouse okay here and um, this is like the baseboard here is the core model all of these that you can see here uh, are like the sensor models temperature humidity pressure light and um, intensity sensors uh, accelerometer dps and environmental sensors that allow you to collect different kind of data such as temperature, humidity, um, gas, and pressure. And also these are like the inputs and outputs um, models uh, that allows you to expand connectivity. As I just mentioned, this is the Wi-Fi interface, which is uh, ESP32, uh, which is like a really well known in, in the IoT community. And there are many cool projects on it going around based on this model. And also we have a narrowband interface, narrowband IoT interface that is based on a BG7070 um, quite a model. And also we have some industrial interfaces, which is pretty cool because most of the time, like right now, uh, we are listening a lot about a uh, manufacturing industry, like the industrial like industry. Uh, and like this the existing sensors doesn't provide like that easy and quick communication for these industrial protocols uh, that are most commonly found on, on these machinery plants. Uh, that is why we look also took care of that. Um, Pre-built is three models that we use in the industrial environment, which is a 40, 40 to 20 million uh, interface model and RS485 model and a zero to five volt interface model. So it it's, it simplifies all the all those uh, processes that you used to used to do when you need to go, for example, to a manufacturing plant and integrate like a, just a development board uh, with this big machine. With this, you can just go with your Wislog base, place your Wislog core and place the, the the interface that you need to to start acquiring the data from from your for your um, plan, for example. So the just to summarize everything that I just shared, uh, we look have different use cases. As I just mentioned, it can be covered like multiple use cases in the real uh, environment, but it is also served as a tool. To, to learn uh, and to, to teach about IoT. Uh, for example, for those passionate makers that maybe doesn't have like a lot of expertise about 
hardware and software. They have like a system that is that allows them to to rapid prototype their their projects with a really plug and play system without having any wire um, faulty connections between the model. For example, if you are not if you are not like super involved with electronics and you start playing with these technologies, maybe you are interconnected a couple of sensors and then you are you're notized that one of the sensors reading are not the proper one. And maybe it is because you are missing a ground uh, cable <laughs> between all your system, uh, but you are not going to face that if you are using the whistle, for example. So also you don't have like to cover any additional step to to implement this project like in a real environment because the whistle already like take care to take to care of the of this so you can go easily from prototyping to implementation and also it encouraged the community to create more and more blocks uh, based on the needs that they are presenting also uh, it provides like a comprehensive documentation for both hardware and software and you are hurry, I heard you can uh, later <laughs> uh, give us uh, uh, just a, a summary about your experience working with this tool. Also, uh, there is no very writing or soldering required uh, when you are discovering different sensors or different input and output solutions, or even cores when we extend our catalog of cores as well. And, and also, uh, it provides like a, a reusability, there is a reusability, a reliable connection, which make it easier for students to get started uh, working with IoT. Um, here, <coughs> sorry, we have a, like if we jump to to those really IoT developers or those IoT like integrator system integrator, basically. The Wizlog allows you to design an IoT solution with models from just one source. So you have like a wide range of hardware and software model uh, to put to start placing all together. And alone to that, you can just place like a LP1 gateway, uh, such as the RAG wireless gateways, uh, to making and deploy a solution in a pretty simple way and also in a quick way. Uh, and also, like the modularity of the of the open source concept of Wizlog enable like the easy expansion of existing IoT solutions. And just to to jump to the real use cases, I'm going to present three like use different use cases for different industry, and we also going through the solution how we are going to be covering this with the Wizlog. Mm. I am drinking water. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, first we have the agriculture application example. Uh, basically, the target here is to get information about soil humidity, temperature in farming fields to ensure proper use of wiring systems. Um, so which are like the main challenges that are facing this industry? Normally, there is not a standard communication available for Wi-Fi, DSM, or wire Ethernet. Uh, for example, and also there are not permanent power supply available. So what is the solution for this application? Basically, we can use a Wizlock core with, the, with, with a couple of Wizlock sensors uh, to uh, start measuring the humidity and temperature sensor uh, and also to, to solve like, all those measurements. Um, also, you can use a Wizlock core just to enhance the, the range of LoRa repeaters to to expand the cover in large area, for example, just in case it's required. And also you can use battery power models with solar panel as a recharging source and interconnect a WIS gate, which are the RAC LoRa one gateways to, far, to forward data to the cloud. What's one cool thing about the WIS block that I didn't mention it to here, here is that it, it, allow, it has two connectors, one for a battery connector and another one for the solar panel connector. So you can easily connect your, your system and it's going to be automatically recharged uh, by all the system that is built in. And um, then if we jump to the industrial application example, we have different targets, which is the survey machines in remote locations. We have also want to get the the machine status and alarms uh, 
if so, if something fails and also want to get supplies status and alarm in case of any supply shortages. So the challenges in this industry normally are the same that we used to have in the previous application example, which is no standard communication available, such as Wi-Fi, GSM, or wire Ethernet. And also we have like hazardous environments uh, with high temperatures, which makes wireless communication challenges because of all the electrical disturbances generated by the motors and also like all the generators around all these plants. So the solution here is just with just use a Wislog core with a Wislog sensor and, and a Wislog uh, input and output model for matching and supply chain super balance. And also use a LoRa, uh, LoRa one gateway from our uh, Wisgate family to forward data to, to the cloud in a really simple way. Um, and then the last one is the smart city application, which is a target is get a geolocation and geofencing in transportation companies also get real-time location of the fleet and also get alarms on vehicles crossing to predefined boundaries, for example. Uh, normally, uh, the challenges that are faced in this application is that the traditional geolocation solutions that are based on ESM communication are really expensive, expensive and also complicated to provision on, and manage them and also our uh, high power consumption units. So we have to change this existing technology with something that is much more level. Um, so the solution for this is just use a Wislog base, use a Wislog core, use a Wislog GPS sensor for location measurement, use a Wislog input and output extension interface to connect the, the warning and all the full injection control from your vehicles. And also use a WISGATE a WIS uh, LoRa one gateway to forward data to the cloud. So as you can see, it's like pretty simple to, to, to cover uh, an application for the different industry just with one unit that allows you to interconnect different kind of models. And here, this is just like an integration application architecture that I wanted to present. I'm not going to present in any demo. Uh, Arahid is going to present in much more cool for all those um, tiny machine learning um, lovers. Uh, but this is just like to give you an idea how you can interconnect your Wislog uh, <clears throat> with an application service that allows you to monitor your data or also to control uh, your data, uh, your, uh, your assets uh, remotely. Uh, for basically like this like architecture is, has different layers. We have the hardware layer, we have the network server layer, and we have the application server layer. For the hardware layer, we have like the LoRaWAN devices, which are the ones in charge of capture uh, and sensing like all the data from the real environment where we are going to be using like a Wislock. Uh, then you have to forward that to, to a, a gateway in case you want to, to jump through a LoRaWAN solution, uh, you can check out one of the WIS, one of the gateways that are provided in our WISGATE catalog, uh, and choose the the ones that that covers the need of your solutions. Then uh, you can you need to configure that gateway to a net uh, with a network server of your preference. Uh, just to place a few, I redirect here to Helium also to chirp stack and the things network. Uh, basically, uh, normally like you have to run uh, some <clears throat> decoder data uh, in those in the network server in order to be able to, to, to decode, as his name says, the data incoming from the devices to place it in a way that is more human readable, in a human readable format and make it easier to then interconnect it to an application server, maybe in most uh, like, for example, this format is a JSON format uh, that can be easily manipulated uh, with different APIs, such as like HTTP APIs or MQTT communication, for example. Um, and these webhooks can be like run uh, under like these, these technologies. And then you have like the application servers, which is where you are going to display your data or you are going to use it to, to control your devices remotely. 
just to, to name a few here, I place a couple of IoT platforms. Uh, some of them are open for the community. Uh, some of them are like enterprise platform, but it have they have a, a really good free tire free free tire that you can use. Uh, in order to get a started and exploring your solution just in case you you are thinking in create like a more like robust application and also in case you want to create an application for end customer here we have ubidot for example uh, we have a uh, other fruit io for example also my device Cadian my devices data cake a uh, kibitro and also like no red that also like allows you to to make different things on it, uh, create your own dashboard, handle different kind of uh, of activation on it. Like it's a powerful tool that allows you to control all the flows or your solution in a pretty simple way just by using different blocks. So if you are not a software expert uh, and you can you can jump to to no red to quickly to easy and quickly getting started with, with the different flows. So <clears throat> that's all for, for like the Wislog introduction and how we can implement it to create our own IoT solutions. And oh no, why this video can be loaded? So this is a video that I don't know why it can be loaded. Um, let me just close here and maybe I can load it just a second. Well, this is weird. Well, this is a, a video that I received yesterday from one of our community members uh, from here from Medellin, who started thinking with the Wislock and also with Edge Impulse and uh, accelerometer sensors. Okay, my internet is super slow. <laughs> um, so let me see if I am able to reproduce it. If not, I already have something for us uh, that he can show us, but okay. Here, let's see if I can reproduce it. Okay, it can be loaded, no problem at all. So yeah, uh, here, this is are like uh, some of the um, sites where you can uh, refer to it um, in order to, to find more documentation about Wislock. Uh, you can literally redirect to our documentation site, which is docs.ragwireless.com. Uh, and also to our GitHub repository uh, on the Rag Wireless, you can find the Wislock repo uh, where you can easily get in started with the different kind of sensors that we already provide. We also provide different application examples ready to use and applications to easily get in started with any industry. And also we have another repo, which is called the Awesome Wislock, which is the repo where we are receiving all the contributions from our community members uh, that are contributing with, let's say, a 3D a case in, cases for, for the Wisplug, in there's another, either another one. So if you have a 3D printer in your home or in your lab, you can just refer to this repo and download the SEL file and put it in Cura and you will be able to, to print your own cases for the Wisplug. And also for those who are contributing with new hardware models, um, they are placing all the information and documentation of those new hardware models that are being built right there. Also, I will love to take this opportunity to invite you all to join our our Discord. Uh, our Discord. You can easily use this link, and you will be uh, quickly joining us in case you have any question about Wislock or any other product that is available on the on the Rag Wireless store. Uh, feel free to to reach out to us, and our community uh, will be super happy to help you to to get started with any of them. Also, if you want to brainstorm any project based on Wisblock, there is a a brainstorm channel where you can just refer to us, and we'll be super happy to to help you. Um, yeah, I think that that's all. Uh, uh, now I think uh, this 
uh, application doesn't uh, doesn't allow me to share my screen and also share my camera. So I'm going to place my camera and maybe we can discuss more about a little bit about the waist look. And also, okay, let me stop here. Uh, okay, right now, perfect. Can you see me? Yeah, sure. Super. So yeah, that's all. Uh, I don't know if you you have like a is anyone have any additional question? I'm super happy to to answer them. Uh, and yeah, if if you want to see like more in deeper the with lot, I also have some units here sending data to to UV dots. I can also show you it. Uh, just to let me quickly change my camera. Sure. Uh, here. Can you see the other camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. So here, uh, for example, this is a, an acrylic case that we provide in our store uh, that allows you to place your waist lock in a in a pretty simple way in order to make your your desk test, as we say it, um, just to prove and validate your ideas. Uh, he, the, I am using here an environmental sensor, for example, uh, that allows me to 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 connect data, uh, temperature data, uh, re relative humidity data, uh, pre pressure, and also pressure resistance, uh, barometric pressure, sorry, and gas resistance. Uh, and here it has like an, an OLED display where we can see the, the data. And also, I am pushing this data uh, to to UV dots over helium. Uh, so I will present you just a quick view of the of the UV dots dashboard in a bit. And also, this is something that I really want, also wanted to show you. This is like a, a really small case that I am working with uh, one of our contributors, uh, members for for the Withlock project, one of our beta tester. She is Robin. And we are working on a, on a pet tracker. It, this has a, like a really <clears throat> cool mechanical system to to play like to close your enclosure. So if we just press this here, we can just open our case. And here we have the whistle lock along with the core, the GPS sensor uh, with its antenna. Also, the lower antenna place it here. And on the back of the on the back slots that are provided on the wisp uh, there is also connected uh, and we also have connected an accelerometer. We are keep working on this design. Uh, coming soon, you will have more information about it. And uh, the idea is to also place the the and a small battery in the in the in the top face, and then you can just easily place it and you are ready to handle your test. And you can see it's pretty small more small like not 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 as tiny as your phone maybe but maybe it's like it's smaller than than your phone so it's pretty nice to see that just with a whisk look and with the 3d printer that i have here on my lab i am able to to build like a solid proof of concept to be able to test something and in if everything works and um, can just call rack and say, hey, I need 100 units. I need 500 units of this uh, with block, with this sensor. Uh, uh, and we are going, we are able to to manage all those development uh, for you. So yeah, I think um, now, Arhid, now that we are in the, in the tiny machine learning experience community, you can give us like a little introduction about your experience working with with the Wisblog, and also uh, like a small introduction about um, how have been your experience working with Edge Impulse. Sure. So this thing, this right here. So this is what you see the Wisblog thingy. It's pretty small thing. I didn't thought this is gonna be this much small, but uh, this is such an extreme piece of hardware. I mean, uh, I have used it uh, for more than three weeks or so. And as of now, it's a great piece of hardware. 
the main highlight which i got to think in over here is that uh, in tiny ml in tiny machine learning we focus on getting the machine learning hardware the machine learning software to be run on hardware that can run on less you know the less power efficient devices the the devices which consume less amount of power and this can be done in over here uh, this device can run on pretty excellent low power such as uh, this thing which you get let me zoom in uh, so these are the connectors which you get one is for the lipo battery which you get uh, the three volts around like that and the other one is for directly connecting up to a solar charger mainly so it's pretty low power but at the same time it's giving you a wide range of you know the communication methods and other stuff so this is the main board uh, along with the the core board uh, which is having the nordic nrf52840 chipset so the thing which is common for in over this board is that uh, one of the most uh, used board in over the tiny machine learning industry is the Arduino Nano 33 BLE sense and the good thing about that is that it uses a Nordic NRF5284 this thing and that thing has the same chipset so it becomes more easy for us to you know develop the software mm -hmm. and run the models on that pretty easily it enables us to run these pretty easily plus the thing which i have done in over here is that i've got this small little this is too much small it's super small, small i think little, we can yeah. we can compare for example now that you mentioned the size of the um, of the whistle i'm going to compare this with a post it like all of you know mm -hmm. that the post it are small and with if we place the whistle on a post it just reference to the side it's like pretty pretty small as you just mentioned and yeah the sensors are like finger thumb like size it's just super super small so what i've gotten over here is that i've got this uh the main with lock board plus the core board and this tiny little uh three axis accelerometer sensor which you get along the the rack wireless door so uh, what I've done is a cool little thing uh, for running an edge impulse model, uh, made using edge impulse, a uh, tiny machine learning model, which can run on this unsupported hardware. So the thing which we are going to be doing today is that I will run up that model. I will make sure uh, to tell you on how you can make up that model using edge impulse, those cloud platforms and other stuff. Plus on how you can extract those binaries as a C++ file for an Arduino ID script and then Putting it as a library, you can run on that pretty easily and pretty easy stuff. So I will share up my screen. I guess my screen is visible. Yeah, is I can see your screen. Yeah, sure. Seems good. So I have come in over my Agent per Studio project, and in over here, what I have done is I have created a project with the name Westblock Accelerometer. So, uh, what I have done is that I have collected uh, five minutes of wave data, uh, as because I have already told that we are using the, you know, the gyroscope sensor, the accelerometer sensor. So, the five minutes of wave, and then it's idle, it's a snake movement, and the up to down movement. Uh, this thing uh, I've taken in from the continuous gestures. Uh, this thing that you get in from the continuous gestures, it is there in over the edge impulse documentation site. You can uh, go, go up to docs.edgeimpulse.com and you can find up that pretty easy. So I have uh, first of all downloaded that zip file from there and then I've extracted it. And then what I've done is that. I've uh, used the Edge Impulse CLI platform uh, using the terminal and pushed the code into this repository, into this uh, uh, project uh, over at the Edge Impulse Studio. So I will let you guys know on how the data set and other stuff look like. This is what you get for the wave platform, uh, the wave motion. And similarly, it has been followed up by, uh, let me change. It is up to down thing, uh, three axes, and then some sneak movements. Cool. So this is how you uh, get up that data. Now the thing that uh, we are going to be doing is that we will also have to collect the test data along with it. And the good thing is that uh, you can either connect your mobile phone as per the 
the tutorials available on the internet plus also we have shown in our previous meetups that you can connect your mobile directly to HM for studio so i've connected my mobile phone then i've taken up that same data uh same data for the wave patterns which you get uh, the up to down the snake motions and uh, more of that and i've collected the same data for that uh test data and the training data Cool. So I will move on to the impulse design right now to create up our impulse. So I've already created up the impulse uh, previously, but I am doing that again to show you guys on how you can do it from the very beginning. So I have taken up the processing block as the spectral analysis block, and then I have used the learning block as of that the KRS one, the neural network formation of the KRS one, the NN classifier. And here are the four. Features which you get idle, snake, up, down, and wave. I will click on save impulse. There you go. It has successfully stored up the impulse. And so, this is the, the raw data which you get from them, the DSP data. Pretty cool. So uh, this is what we have done in over here. I have not changed anything, just the plain simple one, just a couple of changes over here and there and i will click on save parameters cool so i will now click on generating up the features and there you go uh, it has generated up the features and this is what you get up in the the feature explorer graph right there you can have a more look into it on how the data gets distributed and how you can classify in between them. So uh, it sees the on device performance uh, of the processing time of 11 milliseconds and the peak RAM usage is only five kilobytes. Pretty easy and pretty lightweight. Uh, I will move on to the neural net classifier. Uh, uh, I have taken up the normal things, uh, the minimum confidence rating, I have taken it it of uh, 60%, uh, but uh, here is what you get in the normal mode. And if you want, uh, you can change up to the Keras mode. Plus also you can uh, use the IPython notebook, which is the Jupyter notebooks, which you get, and you can run that on your uh, machine locally. I will click on start training. Uh, it will do up the training things, training stuff. We will wait for a couple of minutes for it to do. Super. This is also my pre um, pretty fast, like how to set up everything and mm -hmm. start like yeah. running your, your machine learning models up on a microcontroller, such as Wislock. Mm -hmm. Yes. And can you like can you share more like about like your ideas, project ideas that you have uh, for the Wislock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the project which I have as of think right now and. Um, Still, it's under development. Uh, moreover, it's complete. I will share up the GitHub with you guys once that's everything done. Uh, what I'm doing is that uh, most of the patients nowadays, I guess, uh, the old age patients, uh, they are mostly up in their homes, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they need to do some kind of those. Uh, probably they are being uh, accused of the diseases uh, such as those weakening of the muscles or uh, those. Uh, problems along with that it's related to some kind of orthopedics and physiotherapies so the project which i have developed as of now uh, the west block thingy so we will have to use up the west block uh, from rack wireless plus using the these three axis uh, accelerometer sensor which i have already showed up to you guys and it will be mm, it will be attached up to a hand uh, up in the first region of the hand of the patient and this will be using up the LoRa and uh, we will be having up a rack wireless LoRa gateway up in the maybe the hospital or a local clinic uh, health medic etc and in over there what they will have to do uh, what they can get to know is that every day for uh, maybe it's in the morning or maybe it's in the evening or afternoon time Mm -hmm. This uh, thing, the LoRa thingy, the Swiss block, it will send up the data to the rack wireless uh, gateway, right? And the 
the doctor or the nurse uh, he or she can uh, do up or he or she can have to know that you know the uh, the patient is doing this amount of the data uh, the patient is uh, doing these exercises correctly or not these things correctly or not and everything will be done uh, remotely no need of going up to the homes or uh, maybe even taking up control of that everything is automatic and everything is super efficient and fast and we will be for recognizing the steps as i am already showing to you guys we will be using examples for that uh, for training for making of the training and for classifying in between the the various types of the data super and how how are you going to manage oh it's salary complete mm -hmm. yeah wow so oh, we so have got a uh, 99.9% accuracy super so loss is pretty low. Let me check if everything is going right. So here is what you get to see from the feature explorer. And there is only one single problem with the wave. Oh, that doesn't matter. That, that is pretty, pretty small one. So the in inferencing time is only one millisecond. See how small that is. The peak RAM is uh, 1.5K and the ROM is 15.4K. So cool. So we have now trained up that model, right, in using edge inputs, which can be exported right into there. And we have been using up the quantized model. Uh, and also you can change up to the unoptimized, but I would highly suggest not to do so in using the microcontrollers as because they are obviously having less amount of the RAM as compared to the others. So I will move on to the model stage and i will clean up the model again we will wait for another couple of minutes for it to do okay. we can we can continue with our conversation so yeah, i want sure. to ask you um like regarding like the platform side like how you're going to manage a uh, like those a uh, alerts to to when an unexpected behavior is presented for example yeah, sure. So in Edge Impulse, this thing, uh, mm -hmm. in the Impulse design thing, I have showed you on designing up the model using Keras, right? Yeah. Plus, there is also one more uh, feature of Edge Impulse, which you can use on the step, uh, which is the anomaly detection feature. Mm -hmm. And if you use that, uh, that's it. Your job is pretty easily done. And it will classify up the thing. And then I have thought of using any other those IoT platforms, such as using maybe uh ub dots or you can use aws etc for you know doing up an api creating up that api and showing up that data to the doctor or the nurse yeah definitely super in and, and I, I have another question and i and i forget it uh, the platform one and, ah okay what what do you choose to use laura instead of other communication mm -hmm. technologies yeah so the thing with why i thought of using lora in this project is because uh lora is pretty power efficient and this is the main thing which we use in tiny machine learning plus uh these with block is an excellent piece of hardware uh as because of the nordic and rf52840 it's uh one of the most uh famous chipsets uh used in the tiny machine learning industry so it's pretty you know, it's pretty compatible of running the tiny machine learning models along with it. And that is the main reason of using it. You get low power, you get easy user accessibility, plus you get to run machine learning models on that pretty easily. No need of any doing any kind of those high intensive tasks for it. And, and something additional to add here, I will say that you also have long range communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, you get a uh, very long range of communication as because yeah. mostly uh, there might be a difference of the hospital and the patient's home. I guess uh, should not be less than uh, in as of my city, I would say it should not be less than two to three uh, kilometers. Super. Mm -hmm. And then so now that on. our job is complete, now what is the next step? Yeah, so now we move on to the model testing features. So this is an exciting step which you get. And I will check everything because I I will 
show you guys on classifying everything and all the details. I will click on classify selected. Cool. So, oh, wow. so we have got an accuracy of 100%. Pretty neat. Uh, this thing is only having, okay, cool. So uh, you will have to, if we can do up the retraining of the model once again, then I guess this error will be moved away. So this is it. And now here comes the main stage, which you need to focus on. So there are the two steps, the project versioning and the deployment. So I will click on this deployment option. And so you can see that your uh, impulse can run on C++ library or an Arduino library. So Arduino library, it can run on most uh, Arduino ID compatible microcontrollers such as the best block. Plus you can also generate up the C++ library because uh, I guess the West block is also compatible along with platform IO, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you it's can also run that. available in platform IO. Yeah. So you can even run your C library, C script on that. And there you go. It's pretty easy. So these are the devices which are already supported out, out by Edge Impulse. Uh, the firmware is also already there. And you can see that there are. Uh, one, two, three. There are three Nordic NRI fifty two eight forty base boards. So as I'm already saying, the NRI fifty two eight forty is a chipset which is mostly being used in tiny machine learning. Plus, you get to see uh, LoRa along with it and such a low power thingy along with it. Not only LoRa, but also you can integrate Wi-Fi, NV IoT, and other stuff along with the uh, West Block. So it's a pretty excellent thing. So I will generate up the Arduino library in over here and we can see up the quantized model and the floating model and the unoptimized model. And I will click on the analyze optimizations. Super. You 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 need to to write us um a detailed a tutorial about how to get started with the with look and edge impulse <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh, so that's even currently under build uh, Super. i already have a github for the same uh, for the same library which you can access off i will share the link uh, at the youtube chat plus also in over here uh, which you guys can check on and uh, plus also i i am making up a hackster io article along with maria in which oh, uh, we will share up the guide on how you can get up and running machine learning on your lora hardware using best block so, so there you go uh, it sees the peak ram usage of 1.5k rom is 15.4 accuracy is 100% pretty pretty good Thank you. plus uh, here comes a good thing what i have done in over here is that if you can, I am zooming into it. If you can see this one, it says estimate for Cortex M4F, uh, which is the nano 3 BLE sense. So why I have done it in over here is because the nano 3 BLE sense even uses the uh, Nordic NRA52840. So both are of the same uh, chipset, and thus it will help us in knowing up the correct RAM usage, the accuracy, and other stuff. Okay. So, uh, Annabelle Eon, and now I will click on build. So now it is going to download a library, yes. and then you need to add it like in Arduino to start running it in your WIS block. Mm -hmm. So I've Hello. just stopped my screen and Super. I will again share back. Hey. So, there you go. You can. I can see you. So, uh, yeah, seems good. So there you go. You can now download up your uh, Edge Impulse model as a Arduino library, and then you can run it on and compile and run it on your best block code. Uh, we are already over time, I guess. And, <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, we should end up in a couple of minutes in over here. So this is it for uh, 
as of today for my demo i am thinking of doing a bit more and wider info about it with madia must we release our github and our hexter.io articles uh anything else to see from you madia no i think that's all i i don't know if any one of those who are watching have a question happy to to answer them if not uh, thanks arhit for for the space for sharing more a little bit more about the whistle and also for for finally present us uh, that edge impulse integration that i was super angry to to watch from your side and i really look forward for for the creation of that hackster tutorial uh, and yeah i'm just start spreading the word about this cool uh, meetup that we just had uh, because i'm pretty sure that many people around our communities is going to getting excited about how to get started with Edge Impulse so quickly as you, ju as you just as demonstrate us today. So no, that, that I think that's all. Thank you so much for, for the time today, for preparing this uh, space for, for the community. And if anyone have any additional question about the WIS blog, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me directly to my email that I leave it on the presentation. Or you can also join uh, the Rockstar Discord and you can feel, feel free to ping me uh, using my username, Maca Hernandez. Cool. So uh, seems good. I will just check back if everything is okay and if there are everything, any questions. So it seems that we have got a question from Scorpion Chess, and he says that what other languages should I concentrate on to get into tiny machine learning? I would say that probably uh, C++ is the most used language you should concentrate on, not only on tiny machine learning, but I would say that both on IoT and these machine learning perspectives. C++ is a thing which you can run on both. Plus, if you want, you can get, uh, you can have a look into MicroPython, MicroPython. Uh, which can work in, I guess it work, it might, it will work on the Aquas block soon. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I will just check back if there is anything else. Questions? Uh, no. Perfect. Seems that everything is good so uh, that was it for the meetup everyone uh, you're so glad that you joined us today maria and yeah this is it from my side and this is it from tiny ml aspirants hope to see you more uh, hope to get more info on you and more uh, cool stuffs uh, which need to be displayed by you and me soon and yeah this was it and thanks for joining our mm -hmm. meetup no, Bye -bye. thank you for the invitation. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.